cutting tools I took on the show alone. I needed a good blade that was heavy enough that I could trim trees, chop if I need to, and as well do fine tasks. That's where the BK2 came into play. It's a heavy knife, but it can do those fine tasks. I've actually carved a spoon with only this knife, you know, out in one of my ventures, as well as I used a stone to smooth it. But I've done many things with this knife. It's a strong quarter inch steel, you know, of construction. You'd have to do something pretty crazy to break this knife, and that's what I wanted. When I geared up, my plan was to try to stay out there a year. That was my plan. That's what I geared up for, is to try to last a year. So, the BK2 was my choice. Now, I also brought a multi-tool. reason why, if I lose the BK2, I still have a knife, as well as a serrated edge knife. So I have two knives in this multi-tool. Plus, as you've seen, I have a small saw. I've got a file to sharpen my BK2 and my axe, which I did not bring out here today. I have another video showing my axe and the uh, carry system that I had for the show. But it has a file on it, it's got pliers, your hands are cold, you need to take out a knot, you can uh, use the pliers, they come in very handy for many things. Plus, you know, a few other items. This is the Leatherman Wave, that's what I took, you can check those out, see what other items it has. But that was a good choice as well. And then I took a saw. This here is a Trailblazer takedown saw. The company's no longer in business, although I know another company that has started making these, and uh, I'm going to be reviewing a few. This saw I've had for a long time. I've used it. It's never let me down. It cuts through wood like butter. It's one of the best saws that I've ever used, tell you the truth. The takedown buck saw, and as you've seen, it folds all up into this tube. It, I took this out there because I trust it, and it's never let me down before. So it's it was a really good option, and I figured that it cuts like butter. Now, once it gets dull, it's going to take you know longer to uh, actually be more uh, tough to cut through wood because it's going to take longer to dull to that point. Although, even when they're dull, they'll still saw. It just takes a lot more effort. This one here, still nice and sharp. After many, many, you know, probably a couple cords of wood has been cut with this saw. It's, uh, I've had it out many times. I love this saw. So, that was my cutting tools. I wanted to show you that, uh, what I took for, you know, and why and the brands I used because I have faith in all these tools. My axe was just a Collins, you know, hardware store axe. It cost me 30 bucks. Although, you know, um, I watched the grain in the handle and such. And all an axe to me is a big chunk of metal that you can sharpen, basically, and it will cut through wood. I don't shave with my axe. I mean, I don't feather stick with my axe. Though this one here held a pretty good edge, and you can get it sharp. Though I could if I wanted to. So I was very happy with that there. It wasn't an expensive axe. This here, I think, was my most expensive. That was over 100 bucks. And my BK2 was close to 100 bucks. This here, I got many years ago, I think for 30 bucks or something like that there. But these all will last me a lifetime. So when I came home, I knew that I would still have gear that I could use. Anyhow, 
I figured I'd uh, run this by real quick, go over the cotton tools that I have had taken out with me and why. A good knife, strong knife, you know it's not going to uh, break if you use it right, and it could get any tasks that I needed done, you know, with that knife. As well as a good saw and a good multi-tool. Multi-tool I never take in the bush unless it's long term pretty much. But I was planning to stay a year like I said. Have a good one.